are listening to Graphic Novel Explorers Club Podcast, an audio book club. Greetings, Explorers. I'm one of your hosts, Dennis, joined by... Aubrey. And... Johnny. Today, we're discussing Daredevil, No Fear, by writer Chip Zdarsky and artist Marco Cecchetto. We hope you have read today's title because all three of us have read the book, so beware. Spoilers ahead. Graphic Novel Explorers Club is available wherever podcasts are found, including YouTube. So be sure to leave a review and subscribe wherever you listen to the show. Well, welcome back to our first episode of Season 6. We've been gone a little while. A few changes on here. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit, just a little bit here. But uh, first up, yeah, we're reading Daredevil, No Fear. This is the collected volumes of uh, 1 through 5. It's published by Marvel. Writer is Chip Zdarsky, who wrote Spider-Man Life Story which we reviewed in episode 56. Great book. That was a, if you haven't read Life Story, pick it up. It's it's really good. And then artist Marco Cicchetto. I'm going to make me some comic books. Sorry, Marco. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't land well with our Italian listeners. I apologize. Italian merit. Uh, Frankie would be very offended. <laughs> if you heard that. Color artist Sunny Go or Joe. And then letterer Clayton Cowles. Let's switch it up. We're starting to say who the colorist and the letterers are because we don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> they should get credit for their work. Uh, a couple quick changes. First, our new co-host, Aubrey. Aubrey, say hello and please introduce yourself. Hello there. I'm Aubrey Zavallos. I'm a writer, artist, podcaster, wannabe filmmaker. I have a podcast about movies and feelings called Bring Your Own Popcorn. And I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy that Johnny and Dennis reached out to have me on this wonderful podcast about comic books. Thanks. Yeah, we we did a couple episodes with you and, and just had a lot of a really good time and and uh, we're both old, so it brings the younger perspective <laughs> in here too. So <laughs> the non AARP. Yeah. <laughs> we also have Patreon now, so if you'd like to help support the podcast through our Patreon page, we would love that. We've got links through our website. We're also going to have uh, bonus episodes just for the Patreon supporters with artist interviews and we're going to be looking at different books on that. So please check out our Patreon page. There's links on our website to that. And we would love your support. We're also on YouTube as we said in the beginning here, but um, yeah, lots of more stuff coming this season. And this is daredevil. No fear. Uh, Dennis was, this feels like a reset to the book, like to the, it felt like a whole new start to daredevil. Is that? Yeah, I would say, I wouldn't say it's a total reset, but it definitely is sort of a new look at Daredevil. I was actually a little hesitant only because I don't know if you remember Johnny, but we read the book Sex Criminals and actually Chip was involved. I, yeah. I believe he was the illustrator on that. And despite it being an award winning book, I neither you or I kind of really were vibing with that book at all. I just didn't feel like the the premise was really great. I don't know, Aubrey, have you read Sex Criminals at all? No, I've never heard of it, although the title is a big turnoff. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's an inter interesting premise. It's about a couple who discover that when they have sex and they orgasm, well, they, yeah. they're able to stop, stop time. time. So they decide oh. to do crimes during that. And, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting gimmick. It's won a bunch of awards. A lot of people give it a lot of accolades. I just found it too gimmicky and not very interesting, to be well, perfectly honest. Well, we also uh, didn't like the male protagonist. He was a real problematic oh, yeah. character who's like, instead of, anyways, it's not even worth it. Go listen yeah. to, to Sex Criminals right. episode if you. <laughs> but I, this... I didn't realize that he, he illustrated that. Right. He really slipped my mind there. But this one he wrote, and I, I felt that he did a really good job. I mean, we'll get into it. I don't know how familiar you guys are with Daredevil. I've seen the show. I actually didn't collect a lot of Daredevil when I was a kid. I only had maybe one two issues so i was familiar with the character overall and obviously if you didn't know uh the teenage mutant ninja turtles also basically stole their creation from daredevil the beginning of the original daredevil origin is he helps a guy some chemicals crash on the ground it causes him to go blind well the teenage mutant ninja turtles are actually in the sewer when that happens and then the chemicals fall into the sewer and they mutate as a result so they're actually directly tied to each other. And yeah, I'm, I'm not too much of a fan. How about you, uh, Aubrey, Johnny? Yeah, this was actually the first 
Daredevil product I've ever consumed. I have not seen any of the movies. I've never read a Daredevil comic before. So, yeah, really went in, what's the word? Cold turkey? <laughs> yeah. You went in blind. <laughs> oh. Went in blind, hey. Well, at least you spared yourself not seeing any of the Ben Affleck films. <laughs> yeah, I saw the trailers and that was enough. <laughs> Yeah, this is other than the Netflix series, this is really my first Daredevil anything, really. So the intro to the book, which I like to kind of get you up to speed really quick, is Matt's life, Matt Murdock is Daredevil, in case you didn't know. Matt's life almost came to an end after a traumatic collision left him clinging to life. Now, after weeks of intense physical therapy, he has returned to Hell's Kitchen. So I guess the series leading into this, he had been hurt really bad. Had you read that series, Dennis? No, unfortunately not. And so, yeah, there is a little bit of stuff that happened beforehand that I'm not familiar with. For instance, Wilson Fisk became mayor somehow. I don't know how an obvious criminal uh, <laughs> becomes mayor of a town. I mean, obviously, politicians are crooked, but when you're that obvious of a, a criminal where you're making headline news, I don't know how you get elected. But, you know, once again, Lex Luthor in D.C. also became president of the United States. So who knows? <laughs> at one point, Daredevil, well, as Matt, Mur Matt Murdock does say, I know he rigged the election somehow. Right. And apparently I, I was doing some background on Daredevil because I really don't know much about the character. He was the mayor of New York for a brief period of time. The character was. Oh, I don't remember that. Yeah, I I had read that in there so in there so. But the premise of the story is really it it starts off with uh Matt Murdock kind of recovering from these injuries and then he starts to daredevil again or go daredeviling and then he gets in a, a fight with these three these three hoods who are doing like an inside robbery and during the fight one of them hits his head and appears to be injured, but later dies. And Matt, as the daredevil or the two of them are, he's really torn. Like, did I, this had to be a setup. And, and he starts pursuing different avenues of like, well, who killed this guy? Wilson Fisk is the mayor. So he probably had something to do with, do with this to frame me. But it's also possible he actually accidentally killed this guy. And the main characters of the story are Matthew Murdoch, a.k.a. the Daredevil, this new detective, Cole Porter, who is transferred. He transferred to NYPD from Chicago. And then Wilson Fisk, the nemesis of Daredevil. And Spider when did Wilson Fisk become Daredevil's nemesis? I thought he was always Spider-Man's. He's because he's a big mafia guy in New York. He's always circulated between Spider-Man, Daredevil and the Punisher. And oh. the fact that I mean. You know, I, I love this story, and it, it gets very meta about superheroes in general, but it does kind of point out to me the fallacy with all these heroes, no matter what kind of level of hero they are, or how much violence they're willing to commit. The fact that Wilson Fisk is still around, despite having all these superheroes who are gunning for him, is really, you know, it's kind of, you kind of have to suspend your uh, belief in, in this fantasy world because... um it, it he should he should be dead, <laughs> especially with the Punisher. Yeah, especially with the Punisher going after him. I mean, yeah. the Punisher famously has had like rocket launchers shooting at buildings. I mean, Wilson Fisk should be dead, dead, dead. Does he have superpower? Because he's kind of like a, a mountain of a guy, but he's not like the Blob or whatever he is. Where he's he's like almost like the Blob. I mean, he he isn't quite. You're right. He isn't the Blob uh, from X Men fame, but he does have kind of like this beefy almost impervious body i mean he's he he can take on the best of them hand to hand he was in into the spider-verse right yes he's the oh, main that's right yeah bad guy in into the spider-verse yes he just gets pummeled he gets like hit by a school bus and he's just like ouch <laughs> right anyway back to fist fighting spider-man we also have guest appearances by luke cage jessica jones iron fist who make up the defenders and then a character who I thought was Sabretooth, but turns out to be a gangster called the Owl. Is this a... Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's an older villain. Oh, he's okay. Just, yeah. The Punisher shows up in the, in the book, and we also have a surprise guest at the end that I didn't see coming. So it was, it, it, was, it was a good experience for me. I'd never read a Daredevil book, and I'm on record multiple times saying I don't really care about superhero stories. I was actually invested in this one quite a bit. 
Yeah, what I liked is that it reminded me a lot of the What If and Elseworlds stories I liked because you weren't actually sure what was going to happen to Daredevil. Now, I, you know, obviously this is an ongoing series, and so you could go, well, he's not really going to get arrested. Well, his secret identity isn't really going to get revealed. But I kind of got lost in the story, and I, I, I found the the story well crafted, where you know he's really struggling to to maintain his hero status. And, you know, after these injuries, he feels like maybe he's getting too old. The criminals you mentioned, he almost gets beat up by them, to be perfectly honest. And it's through sheer luck that he manages to survive that. And once again, the story gets a little meta because, you know, a lot of these heroes, they have this, we don't kill, you know, Batman doesn't kill. But geez, you know, if you really think about it, just any kind of bar fight that you're in someone could get killed by accident you can get a concussion or whatever and considering how hard these heroes you know throw their punches what they do to them uh, i mean yeah technically you're not stabbing anyone through the heart but by you know throwing them into um a brick wall or whatever you could easily just kill someone despite your your best intentions now what's interesting is that daredevil especially because of his ultrasonic hearing and such uh, a lot of times, this isn't something new. He's very surgical, and they mention that very surgical with his hits. So he he knows just how much pressure to apply to a certain area, what certain areas to hit, so that he doesn't do any long term damage. And I'm sure Batman is the same way, but he doesn't usually go into that depth of talking about it, which I know sometimes Daredevil has. He talks about he mentions that in the book is that he could be brutal with compassion. Right. So he's beating up some people and. It's like I'll I'll kick him in the solar plexus, but not where it da- damages any of his organs. Especially when he's sloppy, then he loses that precision, but he still has the brutality. Yeah, I like that they talked about that that surgical precision with him because it makes him one of the most realistic superheroes that I've seen depicted. Because I always love to bring up that in real life, people die from getting punched once all the time. It's right. not hard. Your brain is a delicate jelly sack inside of your (laughs) skull that's not even inches thick it's really easy to die from impact to your head even just from a raw fist i don't know why i said raw fist but i did (laughs) yeah (laughs) not a seasoned cooked fist Uh, no my my ex-girlfriend's brother he's a big guy he he's he's six two ish six three somewhere there and they were at a concert and someone sucker punched him in the side of the head and he had to have uh, part of his skull removed to let the swelling go down to kind of spoil the book. It turns out Daredevil really did kill this guy. And the defenders come to him and they're basically like, look, we've all been there. And I was like, right. wow, okay, that's kind of <laughs> crazy. Well, or also nonchalant about like, hey, we've all killed somebody on accident. Uh, and, I, and I kept thinking, I was like, that's manslaughter. That's, you know. You, no, you. that's what I loved about the book. It, it's a meta look at superheroes because honestly, like I said, you know, they, they had the Punisher be the quote unquote devil on the shoulder for Daredevil and go, you know, you're just like me and, and Daredevil's fighting against it. No, I'm not. You kill guys. I don't. I was like, mm. you know, when you think about every single bad guy, every one of those heroes has ever fought Hydra agents or ever whatever. It's not a G.I. Joe cartoon where these guys magically parachute out. They get thrown <laughs> yeah. overboard. They get thrown in the ocean. Who's going to help them out? You know, they get, like I said, thrown into to steel walls, brick walls. They're left in a volcano after the, the base starts exploding. You know, there's tons of people, even though they didn't directly cut their throat and do some sort of fatality, they basically let them die. Yeah. And so... The meta angle of this is that, yeah, they're all murderers. They're all, so, and then Daredevil realizes this. And in, in, in almost a, a fourth wall break, he's like, oh my God, I can't, we all deserve to go to prison, basically. <laughs> uh, and it's true. I mean, you know, these vigilantes are, are crazy. Like, how are you a lawyer, but also you're assaulting these people beyond? Oh, he would, he'd be disbarred immediately if they found, his, uh, found out his identity. And so, yeah, it is hilarious when the defenders are trying to ap- appease him and go, look, you know, it's it's it, you just have to deal with it. And I was like, wow, you guys are just like casually tossing aside certain types of lies. Hey, hey look, sometimes <laughs> when you're in the hero game, people die. It's right. No big deal. Look, when you when you have the power of Luke Cage or Iron Fist, there's no way you're going to punch someone 
and they're going to be okay even if you hold back a little bit. I mean, like you said, Aubrey, most people can get really seriously hurt from just a regular sucker punch. I mean, if Iron Fist is having to beat back all these ninjas and, you know, he's smacking them around, someone's going to get their neck snapped accidentally or like the criminal in this case, he he hit a wall and his neck got broken. I mean, it's going to happen. Or he had a traumatic brain injury. Right. <laughs> but I did like it. I, I really enjoyed the story. The investigative side of it. Like, I, I don't know, does Daredevil really investigate things? Or is he just hanging oh, yeah. around on fire? For sure. I mean, he's a lawyer. So he was he's trying. I did like that angle where, I mean, you were on his side, right? Like, he's the yeah. good guy of the book. So you're like, oh, yeah, for sure. Wilson Fisk is definitely behind it. Or maybe, um, you know, one of his other bad guys that are, are trying to set him up. I even thought maybe it was, it was Punisher putting on his outfit. He's done that before where he put on the Captain America outfit uh, because he knew Captain America was out of it, so he was going to take up the reins. I thought for sure someone else must have done it. And the horrific thing is that after investigating, after talking to even the ER doctor who said, yeah, we've dealt with all your all the bad guys you've beat up and we know how good you are because they've, they've healed up. But this case, it was like there wasn't any conspiracy. You were the one who did it. You know, it wasn't Bullseye. There, there was a case where Bullseye had had put on the Daredevil outfit and started killing people. And I thought for sure that that was going to be the case. But no, it ended up honestly being just him. Yeah, I thought it was going to be him from the first moment that he expressed this kind of disbelief and horror. Like, oh, man, it's got to be a setup. Because what I saw this story as was the story of someone who experiences a total loss of their identity and what they had chosen to define themselves by. So I don't know this character prior to this, but the impression that I get is that this is a person who defined their entire identity and meaning in life by their body and by like their body's abilities. And so if you're if you hinge everything on that and then one little tweak goes wrong in your machine that you're that you're hinging everything on, then the whole thing's going to fall apart. And then it does. And of course, he's not in control of his mind or his body anymore because he totally lost his identity. And so the whole book is him trying to figure out if he was ever really correct about what his identity was and trying to get it back. And spoilers, ultimately finding out that that's that part of him is over. I really liked the interactions with the family priest that Matt and when he's a boy, his dad takes him to and then later. Like that's his, that's like the consciousness that he's trying to argue against. Of I should, you know, I know I should, I know I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm doing it anyways. And um, and just the the conversations that they had in the in the story, I found to be the most intriguing. Even though I'm not a religious person, just I, I like that. That's sort of his consciousness in the story. Catholicism is huge with Daredevil, which is fascinating. It's one of the few heroes that really leans into his religion like most of them you know either they have a space god uh or or you know they say as we all do right you know some space lizard or uh they say they're religious but they don't really explore it a lot you know maybe there's a cross or whatever especially if it's like blade or something but it's not really delved into much but yeah especially in daredevil they really lean into the Catholicism and the symbolism, the fact that he actually wears a devil's outfit, even though he's so Catholic. So it, it's it's really interesting. Well, as we know from that episode of the sign of Seinfeld, when uh, Putty dresses up as the devil and causes the priest to have a heart attack, you know, it's, it's symbolism, right? And then, yeah, at the end, I really enjoyed the fact that you know Spider Man came up to talk to daredevil and what's interesting is there's one particular panel when daredevil has his talk with spider-man and realizes he has to give it up and hands spider-man his mask and spider-man looks back and that's a complete homage to a one issue story spider-man no more which famously there's another splash panel where it shows spider-man tossing his costume into the trash can and kind of going down an alley and that that shot of him looking back is straight from the cover of that. And that's the issue Spider-Man No More, where Spider-Man decides to give up being Spider-Man. And then he realizes in the end that that's what he wants to be, is Spider-Man. So he comes back to be Spider-Man. So it, it's an interesting homage and a parallel to that story as well, where a superhero 
re- it comes to a point where, for whatever reason, in this case, it's physicality. Uh, and sometimes it's also in other stories, you know, a personal life where he has to make a decision. Do you want to keep being a superhero? I, I love the homage to, to Spider-Man No More. Thanks for sharing that. But can I just say real quick that the sexual tension between Spider-Man and Daredevil was thick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're both like standing there all beefy ripped. Oh, when when Daredevil's describing his muscles coiled. Yeah, and he ends it with like, and he's here in my house. <laughs> he's very excited. <laughs> yeah, good call. I really, we haven't mentioned it yet, but I really, really enjoyed the art. Now, a lot of times Daredevil artists sh- try to show some way of uh, expressing his echo images. And I, I found the artist to really be effective in terms of how he expressed that and also how the writing complemented that. You know, you're talking about how Aubrey Howe, you know, Daredevil was describing uh, Spider Man being in his, his, his place. And I found it very good to see what was going on inside Matt Murdock's mind when he's just, he's seeing these images and, and how. There's a texture to to what he's seeing, despite him not having any visual. So yeah, I, th- I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, I love that. I don't know if that's a, I don't know if that's a common because I haven't read any other Daredevil stuff, so I don't know how they usually portray his blindness and his his sort of sonar radar ability. But I thought it was so awesome, and I loved how they drew it. I liked how uh, he had said when he's fighting Cole Porter, that detective. Which was another another thing in this book. I was like, there's no way this ends well for either one of them. They, right. they basically did the lawn fight from Lethal Weapon, um, <laughs> and uh, every, all the cops just stand around and let these two, Daredevil and this detective, duke it out. How he, basically Cole Porter catches up to him and is, shoots him, and when he's down on the ground, Daredevil explains, like, my version of Vision isn't just in front of me, it's 360. So if you're standing directly behind me, it's like you're in front of me. And that's how he takes him down. But I really liked that. Like, this has got to be, I, I imagine most of the credit goes to the artist, Marco Cicchetto, um, <laughs> where they show, it's like a two page example of how Daredevil's abilities work. So it's the same image. One's how common people would see the world. And then you see how Daredevil sees everything. And it was really neat how, like, he taps on this metal pipe and it creates an echo that he can hear and it bounces off of everything. And it just shows, I, it was just a really cool example. I would love to see a whole comic book just drawn that way where it's the outside world and then Matt's inner world. And I haven't read too many Daredevil comics, like I said, and the ones I have seen usually just has a, like a sonar going off his head and maybe there's like a, a silhouette of a character, but they don't usually do that whole, almost like, I don't know, 3D grid kind of look they did. And I thought it was really effective. So, yeah. And then, yeah, once again, going back to the, the that uh, that fight between uh, Officer Porter, I thought it was another good meta uh, commentary because you did have these cops, some of them, you know, who owed their lives to Daredevil and then some were corrupt. And then here's Porter being probably what a real cop would act like in terms of Look, you have to follow the law. You can't just be a vigilante. And it, and he's yelling at the 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 cops who owed their lives to him. And you know, what are you doing? You're not real cops, you know, but that's how the world of comic books works where cops kind of turn a blind eye because you're one of the good guys, quote unquote. I do like the tension that Cole Porter had. I thought he was going to be a Wilson Fisk man, but cuz he's new to the police department and I thought he was going to kind of be in Fisk's pocket, but Porter devises a way to meet him just to kind of size him up and be like, okay, this is, I'm going to bring this guy down too. I'm going to get Daredevil, but I'm going to get you also because you're a crooked thief. Yeah, Porter is probably the most realistic character in terms of how a law enforcement officer would approach the situation. And so for him to be thrust into this comic book world where you, you either have dirty cops or cops who just are accepting of the vigilante way, which, you know, to be perfectly honest, it it always confused me how, and I I always forget how it works out, but how Daredevil just kind of patrols this one area of Hell's Kitchen while he lives in New York, which has the Fantastic Four, it has Spider-Man, it has Avengers headquarters. Like how 
so much crime. They're dealing with the macro. He's dealing with the micro. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the, the, the one thing I'll posit to the both of you and our listeners is, is that it? Like he's, he killed this guy on accident trying to break up a robbery. But uh, is this, I'm curious if this is that incident will play into future, the future of Daredevil. I mean, he's, he's a murderer. He manslaughter, I guess, technically, but. Well, there's at least, I believe, 36 issues in Zdarsky's run. So there's more to it. Who knows? He might come to accept the fact that this is the price you pay for the. I mean, just like Jessica Jones said, you know, this comes with a job, right? I mean, you have to understand that there are <laughs> good. I mean, look, realistically, that's what we would say. But comic book world, that's what happens. You know, that's part of there's going to be you have to break some eggs in order to make an omelet. And. These heroes accept that. Yeah, I would say in this run, it feels like he's in the shock and denial stage of grief over the loss of this identity identity that he Ooh, had. Yeah. So he's not he's realized like, oh, I'm broken. W- who I was is over. And instead of being like, so who am I going to become now? What am I going to do next? He's just clinging on to the old ways and and then having this despair about like, if I'm not that, then I'm nothing. So I assume the. The rest of the run will be him coming around to being like, okay, well, who can I be with what I have now? Or who can I be without hinging my entire identity on this one thing, which is being surgically precise in violence, I guess. <laughs> These weren't like even henchmen. They're just three guys who were robbing, what, a convenience store or right. breaking into a place after hours because one of them used to work there. So it's not like they were even – They Big weren't time. even – Yeah, they – so it's I'm just curious how how the cops will how does the you know law and order figure into like hey I guess we'll just write this one off <laughs> we'll give you this one daredevil well I mean it it once again it, it's a meta commentary like how do you apply law and order to these vigilantes they're all vigilantes I mean it it's very interesting uh because in a way, like I said, Daredevil realizes that they're all bad guys and they should all be locked up because, in essence, they're all criminals. And But you're right. I mean, an Elseworlds story, normally they don't address this sort of thing in the mainstream comic because it is problematic. Being a superhero is inherently problematic. And I think all the superheroes that came after Superman were all exploring that idea because Superman was the first superhero and he did not explore that idea. He's just perfect and great right. and everything's everything's dandy, all American. And then everyone who came after that was like, but what if it was more realistic or what if it was realistic, but we tweak everything so that it still works because we have to sort of bend the bend the boundaries of of what would really work in reality. Well, would you what do you think of the book? I mean, would you continue reading this series yeah i'm really curious what they're gonna do next i mean i would love to see i think it'd be really funny to see daredevil become an anti-vigilante vigilante vigilante. (laughs) oh that would where he's just like he starts like trying to bring them all to justice i think that would be funny i don't think that's what's gonna happen but i'm very curious to see what happens next and because of the art and the pacing of the story and the internal dialogue i really liked all of that in this series so I would definitely be invested in reading it more, and I would recommend reading this one. What about you, Dennis? Oh, absolutely. Like I said, I, I, I like the realistic portrayal of Matt Murdock, the struggles he's feeling, and it's a lot more in-depth than usually what Bruce Wayne goes through, and I found it very interesting, though I plan to finish the whole run, actually. Yeah, this is a good one. I, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to keep reading it. This will be my first ongoing Capes and Cal series ever. Uh, yeah, the art was great. Marco Cicchetto. Buena job on the art. Five cannolis for you, Marco Cicchetto. <laughs> if people want to follow you, where can they follow you? On the social medias. Uh, you can follow me, Aubrey, at Mixtape Majesty on Instagram and Twitter, or you can follow my podcast, Bring Your Own Popcorn, on Twitter and Instagram as well, and all podcast platforms. What days do your episodes drop. oh whenever they want to i release about one episode a month <laughs> and you can follow the podcast on twitter and insta at gn explorers club 
Cool. Thanks for listening. Thanks for uh, sticking around for our new season of the podcast. We're really happy to be back. And uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Yay. Bye. Stay safe.